So today we're going to keep talking about literal equations and we're going to start with number 12. So for number 12 it says to solve for b. But before I concern myself with where I need to go to solve for b, I'm going to clear the fractions first. So to do that, we are going to put a over 1. By putting a over 1, what we have is a fraction equal to another fraction. So what we can do from here is cross multiply. So if I take a times d, I have a d equals, then 1 times b c is just b plus c. Then from here, now that all the fractions are gone, I'm going to look for b again. b is right here. So in order to solve for b, the last thing that we need to do is subtract c from both sides. So by doing that, we cancel c over on the right, and on the left we have a, d minus c, and that's going to equal b. You can also write it as b equals a, d minus c. The next one that we're going to do together is number 16. This time we want to solve for t. On this problem, there are no fractions, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to start immediately solving for t. So the first thing that we need to do in order to solve for t, remember you want to follow the order of operations in reverse. We're looking to see what's happening to t. Well, p and r are both being multiplied times t. Then there's another p that's being added to t. So to follow order of operations in reverse, the first thing that we need to take care of is the addition. In order to move p to the other side, we need to subtract p from both sides. So on the left, we have a minus p. And once we subtract p from the right, all we have left is p r t. So again, P and R and T are all being multiplied times one another. So to finish solving for T, we need to divide both sides by PR. So A minus P over PR equals T, or T equals A minus P over PR. So we've taken our former equation and we have resolved it for T. T is now by itself. The last one we're going to do together is number 17. So I'm going to rewrite it so I have a little bit more room to work with here. So let's solve for f. Where is f? f is right here. So the first thing that we need to get rid of is the 5 over 9. We need to get rid of the 5 over 9. What is happening with the 5 over 9 and f? Well, if I was going to simplify this problem, I would need to distribute 5 over 9 inside the parentheses. The distribution property is multiplication. So to undo multiplication, what do we need to do? To undo multiplication, we need to divide. We need to divide, we need to divide both sides by 5 over 9. However, let's think about what we're doing here. We have 5 over 9 divided by 5 over 9. Remember from the other day when we wanted to divide two fractions, we do keep, change, flip. So what we do is we keep the first fraction, 5 over 9, that stays 5 over 9. We change division to multiplication and we flip the second fraction so it's 9 over 5. So it's much easier to multiply both sides by 9 over 5 than it is to divide both sides by 5 over 9. So that's what we'll do because they equal the same thing. 5 over 9 divided by 5 over 9 is the same thing as 5 over 9 times 9 over 5. So let's multiply both sides by 9 over 5. I'm going to put the C over 1 over here on the left. 
and we'll multiply the left-hand side first. Remember, when you're multiplying fractions that are right next to each other, you multiply straight across. So 9 times C is 9C. 5 times 1 is 5. On the left, on the right-hand side, 9 times 5 is, what is 9 times 5? 9 times 5 is 45. 5 times 9 is also 45. So you see our goal has been accomplished right here. 45 over 45 is just 1. And when I'm multiplying a 1, I really don't need the 1. So 45 over 45 becomes 1, which is what we wanted. And so now we've gotten rid of the fraction on the right-hand side. Now that the fraction is gone, I don't need the parentheses anymore. And I need to remind myself what I'm solving for, I'm solving for F. So our last step in solving for F is we need to add 32 to both sides. So F equals 9C over 5 plus 32. So now that we've done a few of them together, I want you to pause this video and try numbers 10, 11, and 14 on your own. So go ahead and pause the video, give number 10, 11, and 14 a try, then press play on the video to see if you got them right. So starting with number 10, looking back at number nine, number 10 is very, similar to number nine. What we can do is put BH over one. So then we have V equals one times BH is just BH. Three times one is three. So once I've done that on the right hand side, if I put the V over one on the left hand side, then I can cross multiply. 3 times V is 3V. 1 times BH is BH. So I set that equal to BH. Then, now that the fractions are gone, let's solve for B. B is being multiplied by H. So to solve for B, I need to divide both sides by H. Therefore, 3V over H equals B, or B equals 3V over H. Looking at number 11, all I need to do to this problem is put K over 1 and cross multiply. So K times 2 is 2K. 1 times mv squared is mv squared. So now that the fractions are gone, I'm looking for what I'm solving for. I'm solving for m. m and v squared are being multiplied together. So to undo multiplication, we divide both sides by v squared. Therefore, 2k over v squared equals m, or m equals 2k over v squared. Take a look at number 14. There are no fractions, so we're just going to jump right in looking for where y is. y is right here next to b. So let's look at what's happening to y. First, y is being multiplied by b, and then we're adding ax to it. Well, to solve for y, we need to do these steps in reverse. So I need to start by subtracting ax from both sides. By equals C minus AX. And then B is being multiplied by Y. So to move B to the other side, we need to divide both sides by B. And we end up with the final answer of Y equals C minus AX all over B.